Welcome back to Latham's AP Macroeconomics. Today we're moving on to some demand pull and cost push inflation scenarios and all. First, I want to remind you that you need to know the determinants of aggregate demand, the determinants of aggregate supply. You need to know the three reasons aggregate demand slopes downward. You under, need to understand the average propensity to consume and especially the marginal propensity to consume because this ties in to the multiplier and that generates the tax multiplier and you also need to understand if we have an equal increase in G government spending and taxes that GDP will increase by whatever the government spends by G spending right G just whatever if it's 10 government spending 10 tax GDP increases by 10 back to the MPC real quick that's one if you use 1 divided by, not the MPC, but the marginal propensity to save, which the MPC generates, then that equals M. And let's assume M happens to be 4 in this case. Okay, that will then, the tax multiplier must be negative 3. 1 less than the, MP, the multiplier and then it's a negative because it's taxes. Okay, those are just little reminders. By the way, these pages are from the old version of McDonald Brew. Um, that's actually, let me see, 16th edition, which is a few years old. So you can ignore those unless you're using that book, which I am today. Okay, long-run equilibrium. Once again, those page numbers are from that same book. We're in long-run equilibrium. What's it look like? Well, we have short-run aggregate supply. We have aggregate demand. We have long-run aggregate supply. We have equilibrium, and we have we're full employment, and we're actually right there. That's referred to as long-run equilibrium. GDP real as it is at full employment. Price level right here. Okay, this is the standard. This is where we start from graph. Now, we don't always have to be there. But that's kind of the goal. That's nirvana. So let's look at situations other than nirvana. Okay. First one, demand pull inflation. Well, what's it sound like? Demand and inflation. Okay. Well, we're going to shift aggregate demand and we're going to shift it to the right. Okay. Demand pull inflation. Did it create inflation? Yes, it did. PL sub 1, AD sub 1, Q sub 1. Okay, we have now increased GDP, but at what cost, right? We've increased GDP, but the cost of inflation. That's not necessarily great. How does this happen? How do we get beyond long-run aggregate supply? Well, the reason we do is because in the short run, prices and wages are sticky. Okay, in other words, as soon as inflation rises, suppliers don't immediately increase prices, Wages don't immediately go up. You know, wages a lot of times are under contract or your boss doesn't give you a raise every month. They do it once a year or something like that. And so in the short run, prices and wages are sticky. Businesses realize there's additional demand. They make additional profits. And we end up with this higher real GDP. But what happens after a while? Well, in the long run, however much time that takes, well, prices and wages become flexible. Well, when prices and wages become flexible in the long run, those contracts expired, time takes, continues and all, well, the prices and wages become flexible. When prices and wages become flexible, costs increase to businesses. When costs increase to businesses, they supply less. So we end up with a new su aggregate supply curve the aggregate supply curve shifts to the left because businesses are hurt by the higher prices and higher wages. And we end up with another new equilibrium. We're going to label that PL sub 2. Prices are up again. And we're right back to where we started at full employment. That's demand pull inflation in a nutshell. Moving on. Okay. We're in a recession. Well, what's a recession come from? A lack of spending. What happens? Aggregate demand shifts leftward. Now here, what's supposed to happen is price level actually drops some, okay? And GDP drops. 
Now, once again, the concern is that prices and wages can be sticky, and so we may have some drop in price level, but it's hard to have those drop even more where supply will benefit, businesses will benefit from these lower prices and wages. And so the government says, this isn't okay, we can't ever have a recession. So the government says, we're going to spend. So G increases. Well, if G increases, right, you're going to end up with the government spending, that's autonomous investment, and you end up right back where you started. Okay, so initially, aggregate demand shifts left because of lack of demand. The government spends more, increases, and you're right back to where you started at the very beginning, but to, the government has spent more money. So that's got us out of the recession. That's what typically happens in today's world. Moving on. Cost push inflation. Well, in co case of cost push inflation, it's caused by a supply shock. And the most common supply shock would be oil prices increase rapidly, or it could be wages in a particular industry, but the biggest one is oil prices. Well, supply shock literally means supply goes down. So we're going to shift the curve. Sh supply shifts left. SRAS1. What's happened? Well, we've gone into recession again, but this time, instead of prices dropping some, prices actually go up. Not good, right? That's why it's called cost push inflation. We have inflation at the same time we're in a recession. Now, once again, there's a concern about sticky prices and wages, contracts, and all those other things. It's just hard to lower all these other things. And so the government steps in. They spend more money, aggregate demand increases, and we have even more inflation. Okay, so here's a solution where we create even more inflation because the government steps in and starts spending money. Okay, that's most common in today's world, that those, those things would happen with demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Okay, now let's move on to old school recessions. Okay, an old school recession, we had a recession back in the day. Aggregate demand goes down. There is, there is no government interference. Okay, and so what happens? Well, what happens is eventually wages and everything else go down. Businesses benefit from that. So the short-run aggregate supply shifts to the right because of the lower prices and wages. Those, in this case, it's assumed flat prices and wages are flexible. Okay, they're flexible, or it, they just wait so long. It could be two, three, five years that they become flexible in time, and you end up at a new equilibrium, simply at lower prices. But you do get back. To full employ employment. So that's old school recession. And the key is no government spending. Okay. The government doesn't interfere. They allow supply. They allow costs to drop. Businesses supply more. And eventually the economy gets back to its original full employment. Okay. Last one. Cost push inflation. Once again, the government decides to stay out of things. GDP drops, and we have inflation. Okay, let's say this is an oil price shock, and there's nothing we can do about the price of oil. The people that control it keep the price high for extended periods of time. How do we ever get out of a recession? Well, it turns out there's lots of other costs other than just oil. There's wages and various other products and all. All of those costs, even if oil never dropped in price, all of those costs could drop. Eventually, if those costs do drop, then you'll end up with the same cost you originally had, just higher cost for oil, but lower cost for everything else. And once again, supply just shifts back. So it shifts, it shifts to the left, then it shifts right, because prices and wages other than the cost of oil lower, or even conceivably in the long run, perhaps the price of oil drops also. So we've got a demand pull inflation, too much aggregate demand, cost push inflation, 
a supply shock, and then we've got government interference and no government interference. Make sure you understand all these things. You may need to review this one a second time. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.